heard here on my clock on my iPhone, and that's what we're going to go with. It is my sincere pleasure to introduce to you our host tonight, Melissa Armo, www.thestockswish.com. Melissa, you can now hit. Thank you so much, Kathy. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Welcome. My name is Melissa Armo, and I own a company called The Stock Swoosh. And tonight I'm going to talk about the system that I use to trade. If you have any questions, you can feel free to just write them in the room as we're going along here tonight. I will answer them as we go along. I'll say the question out loud. And, I, and I'm going to talk about what I do specifically, the trading system that I use, which is GAPS. Uh, before I get into that, I'm going to go over the results from October, November, and then I'm going to review the last week's trade specifically for everyone here. Um, and if you're interested in learning what I do, you can feel free to reach out to me. You can email me at melissatthestockswish.com or feel free to call me if you have questions at 929-3200-GAP. So you can also look for me. I've been doing spots on television talking about stocks in the market on Fox Business Network. One of the really important things to become a, a, a full-time day trader or even a part-time day trader, if that's what you want to do, is to look at each day individually. For example, I didn't do anything today. I, in fact, I, there was no stock symbol today that met my criteria long or short. Uh, and so one of the really important things, I think, with trading, if you want to do this and, and be serious about it, is to recognize that there might be some days when something doesn't set up. It's better than losing. And it's hard some days. And, and, and it's, it can be challenging. I run a trading room as well. And there's days that I, I feel like I want to do something. And it is a busy season right now. But there was nothing this morning that met my, my strategy. So what do I do? I have a system that I created where I'm looking at stocks that are gapping. And I do prefer it to short. There are sometimes times that I will do a, some days where I will do a trade that is a long, but I have a system I created and I called it the golden gap. So I'm looking at stocks that are gapping, either stocks that are gapping down or stocks that are gapping up. But I'm really not trend trading, okay? And, and I say this because I, I just took a quick look here before I popped on the mic at GE. And GE was something that I saw this morning, but it didn't meet my criteria. It traded lower. GE, the stock itself, is in a downtrend, but it didn't meet my criteria today to do as a short. Although if you shorted GE today, it was a profitable trade, it fell. So there will be many, many days where stocks go with the market, where stocks go on their own in the trend, which GE was today, was, was a short and the stock's in a downtrend, but that's not what I do. I'm looking for a stock to gap in the pre-market, and if it doesn't rate per my system in the pre-market, and by pre-market I mean before the open, which is 9.30 Eastern time, then I'm not doing the trade. Now you can look at stocks that gap at night, which is called the post-market period, which is right now, or in the morning, which is called the pre-market period. Either way, I'm looking for a stock that is setting up before the next business day whether that's at night or in the morning. And if I see that that stock is gonna make a move in either direction, up or down, before the open, then I will look to trade it on the live, live day, okay? Many, many day traders though are waiting to do trades after 10 o'clock, trend trading or going with the market. And that's not what I do. <clears throat> One of the nice things though about what I do is that you don't need the market with you in order to trade the stock symbols that I do. So you can be in any market environment and do it because the stock is on its own in the gap when it's gapping. For those of you that don't know what a gap is, we're gonna go over that tonight as well. I just put this in the webinar, although I have a video up on YouTube if you wanna go see October's and November's results. I'm gonna quickly scroll through these. This was all of October results and then the beginning of November. So October was a good month, over 35 grand. Average per day, 1949. Now people, often ask me how much do you risk these trade risks were between a thousand and fifteen hundred some were some were around a thousand some were more than a thousand but that's about the average risk that i take and we're going to go over the specific size and the trades from last week now the beginning of november started out slow because it was off two days doing television and radio for fox but ddd was a short on the day of the first okay then in november and these are all the trades we're going to go over tonight 
which was last week, the first full week of November, it was a good week. It was a positive week for everyone in the room. Now, what's the difference between someone that would make thousands of dollars a trade or someone that would make a couple hundreds of dollars a trade? Only one thing size. So how do you get to the point where you can make these kinds of results? Because the, the totals for last week was like over eight grand. How do you get to that point? You have to be able to take size. And how do you get to the point where you can take size in your trades? You need to know what you're doing. I mean, you absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, have to feel what I call 100% conviction when you take the trade. And what does that mean? It means that you have a high probability that you believe in your mind and your heart that the trade will work and you feel okay with taking the risk of $1,000 per trade, for example, okay? So the October and November trading results, this is just going back the last six weeks, was good, over 44 grand. And again, risk was between 1,000 and 1,500 per trade. So ultimately, the difference between someone that is making money in the market or someone that is not making any money in the market at all that's break even or someone that is losing money in the market is knowledge because that's what counts. If you have the right knowledge, whether you make $100 every day or $1,000 every day, the difference is only size. So you've got to prove to yourself that you've got the knowledge to do it, to make money consistently, because it's the consistency that really counts in order to do this as a trader. Because there are many days where traders trade and make money and they take bad trades, trades that they could never replicate for any consistent results over and over and over. The beauty in what I do is that I've been doing this now for you know over nine years, almost 10, and people are replicating my results. They take my class, they take the trades that I call in the live room. My results can be replicated by doing and following what I do and learning my system. And we're gonna talk about that tonight. So the idea is earning power, not necessarily where you're at right the second with your trading, but the idea that you're moving forward into your future knowing and having the confidence in yourself that you can do it and that you could achieve these results yourself if you learn my system, because that's what counts, all right? So here's how we did it. And we're going to go through last week's trades. Anyways, getting to my point here, what system do I use? I started to tell you it's gaps, okay? And the reason that my gap system works is because I'm looking at the moves that institutions are making in stocks. And, and I'm going to go back to GE just because that was, that was a, a stock that dropped today. Unfortunately, GE, even though it had an institutional sell-off today, did not do it in the pre-market. Okay, they had some kind of conference today that was going on and on and on all morning and into the morning period past the open. It was not an earnings announcement or anything like that. It was a conference that was going on today. So it went on for quite some time. But normally when I'm looking at a stock before the open, I'm looking to see what institutions are doing with their positions in these stocks. Are they buying the stocks? Are they selling the stocks? And that's why my system works. I'm taking the position with the institutions. They're doing what they're doing first by creating the gap itself before the open, and I'm waiting until after the open to see if the stock sets up to take the trade after the open, because that's a safer time to be in a trade. It's not that you can't trade in the pre and post market. You absolutely can. You absolutely, without a shot of a deck, can. But it, 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 is, it is a very wild, wild period to trade, and I wouldn't really suggest people to trade in the pre and post market at least without any size, at least, you know, not the size of the positions that I'm talking about here today. Although there's times that in the pre and post market, you can make a lot of money, a crap load of money if something goes your way, but you can also lose a lot in the pre and post market. So there's more volume and you, I can put stops in with limit orders that will get filled in on the live day. And that's what allows me to do it and feel that I have a fixed amount of risk where I can set a stop and know that if the trade doesn't work, for example, I'll lose a thousand bucks. So I don't, I don't have unlimited risk when I'm taking these trades. I'm take the trade and then I use a limit order stop. Okay. And that's something I teach in my class. Anyways, getting back to what I was saying, how do I do it? I use a checklist. Every morning I get up and I rate gaps. And so to, this morning was one of these weird days where I didn't rate anything. So I didn't, I didn't even have a watch list this morning for me to rate stocks, there was very little stocks that were gapping this morning that were quality, longs or shorts, okay? I didn't like anything. Tomorrow, I'm certain there'll be something and it should be a very busy week. I did look at the things that are out this week that are happening. 
and it is earnings season right now. And for those of you that don't know, when stocks report their quarterly earnings, which happens four times a year, they typically gap. Now you don't know if it's going to be a good gap or not, and you don't know if the stock's going to gap up or down when they report, but it's something to watch. Although there are many, many other reasons why stocks gap as well. Stocks can gap when they have news too. And GE really was a news-related thing today. Unfortunately, it really didn't gap. But in the morning, this checklist is what helps me to direct me in, in, to do the right thing or to not do anything at all like I didn't today. It helps keep me disciplined. It's, it's, like, it's like if you were a pilot and you're going through the checklist before you take off and you're checking all the things that need to be done. Or if you're a doctor before you go into surgery and you're checking off the patient had this thing, that thing, this thing set up, whatever, anesthesia, all of it. You go through your checklist before you do what you're going to do in the day, okay? And like I said, for those of you just signed in, if you have questions, you can just write it in the room and, and I'll answer them out loud. Anyways, really, trading, trading is not that hard if you know what to do. The problem is that you got to get a move in something to make money. You get a move in it with size, and you can make good money trading. But you got to get the move in the right direction. And what do I mean? I mean, you got to go long stock that's rallying, and you got to short a stock if it's dropping. And the idea is to get in and get out quickly, in my mind, as a day trader, so that you don't suffer through taking a trade in something and then being down in it until it goes and also having to wait for hours and hours. The market is open from 9.30 to 4, but I don't trade that whole period. Every once in a blue moon, I will take a second trade in something or a later trade, but it's only if I feel like the stock has a bigger target left in it on the day or if I have the market with it or the market's power trending with it, but that's very, very rare. We will talk about one second later trade here that was last week. But ultimately, trading really isn't that hard if you get the direction right in something and the timing. Suffering, though, I hate doing. So I'm a fast, fast trader. I like getting in something and getting the money move where I'm right up almost as soon as I take it, and I get right out then with the profit. And I really think that that is the best way to day trade. Otherwise, you're taking a trade, waiting for it to go, and suffering because you could be down in the trade until it goes and not knowing if it's going to or not. And, of course, many, many things can happen that could change that. For example, market, news-related events, world events, things like that. Okay, so how do I find the money move in the stocks that I'm choosing? I'm looking for stocks that are gapping. And again, I'm going to go over what that is. So what is a gap? A gap, a stock gaps when the opening price today is different than the closing price of yesterday's trading. So the market closes at 4 o'clock Eastern time, opens the next morning when? 9.30, okay? So between 4 and 9.30, a stock is gapping. A gap is a break in price action from one day to the next. So this is a simple concept. And in fact, many, many stocks, almost every stock that exists or trades at thousands and thousands in the market, gap. Very rare that something would close at 31.82 at 4 o'clock Eastern time and over the next day at 31.82. Rare, rare, rare. Now, it might close at 31.82 and open the next one morning at 31.85. That may or may not be something I look at. Okay, usually things open or close very close or similar to the price that they're at. And that could, you know, be construed as a gap. But what I'm looking for is things that are qualified gaps that are gapping for a reason. And again, that could be one of many, many, many different reasons. Okay, earnings are only one reason. News is a reason. With the sector, with the market, there's lots of reasons. Okay. Now let's just look here at this. So this was, a, this is a daily chart. Okay, this was a, a gap from last week. Actually, the stock gap today as well. You could have shorted it too. It was AMD. And I just want to show you here. So what is a gap? This is a daily chart. I just clipped it going back from late July until here in November. So this is a daily chart of AMD. It's a ticker symbol in this one here. So the stock closed here. This is the night before last week at 1170 something or whatever. And opened here the next morning around what? 1120-ish. So the stock closed at 4 and open at 9.30 at a different price. Here it gapped down. Now stocks can gap down and drop, which is what happened here in AMD, or stocks can gap down and rally. Let's see if we can find a something like that over here. Here's one here. Stock closed here, gap down. This is a gap down that happened in AMD back in August, and it did not fall, it rallied, okay? Here's another one here. Stock closed here, gap down and rally. Stock closed here and gap down here and rally. Stock gap up here, OK? 
Okay, a gap up is when a stock closes at one price and then gaps up and opens at a different price up, above where the stock closed. So here's 4 o'clock, here's 9.30. Here's another gap up. Stock closed here, gapped up. Stock closed here around 12.75, gapped up to 13 whatever. Rally. Sometimes stocks gap up and fall. Where's one of those? Here. Stock closed here, gapped up, was not a long, fell, it was a short. So just because something gaps up doesn't mean it's going to rally. This one did here, this one didn't. And just because something gaps down doesn't mean it's going to fall. This one here fell, this one over here rally. So the challenging thing if you want to play gaps as a trader is to determine what gaps you are able to predict the directional bias of to take a trade and specifically to trade it on the live day as a day trader where you can get in and out sometime between 9.30 and 4. But for me personally, what I'm trying to do is to get in and, in and out between 9.30 and 10. Because I feel if I can find those gaps, I'm going to get the highest, best chances of success, predictability, and a move. And the best stops because I'm training on a one-minute chart. And those are the charts we're going to go over today. These are day charts. So on the day chart, I'm using my 26-point criteria to predict the direction that the gap will go up or down, make a pick, watch it, watch it on the open, and then I wait for the setup and take it. I do not trade in the pre-market. Does anyone have any questions so far? So you could go back and look at anything that trades at all, any day trade, any day chart in the world, okay? You could say, well, if I went long here, if I went short here, I would have made a million dollars. Yeah, that's great. But the idea is predicting it before it happens because that's really how you're going to be able to make money. If you can predict the direction that a stock will go or the overall market or the ETFs in the market and take the trade before the move happens, then you will be able to make money. Some entries are aggressive, whether you do day trades or options or swing trades, meaning you might get in and be down before the move happens. If you feel very confident it's going to go, you could be a little bit patient, specifically with options trades or swing trades, if you want to be aggressive on the move to get a really good price in something. I'm aggressive when I'm doing my day trades because I'm trading in a one-minute chart. And some trades I'm doing very fast, meaning I could be in the trade at 9.31, I could be in the trade by 9.35. And five minutes into the open is a very, very fast, quick entry. Most day traders do not trade at all until after 10 a.m. Eastern time. Even gap traders, okay? Yeah, any questions from anyone so far? This is a quiet group tonight. Are you guys awake? And girls. <laughs> Anyways, why do gaps work? Well, they work because of the footprints of institutional money. What does that mean? Hedge funds, banks, they're the ones that move stocks. Whether they are stocks like Amazon, whether it is the overall market like the SPY, okay? I do not trade penny stocks. I do not trade low volume stocks. And I tend not to trade stocks that are under like a $2 or dollar price point, okay? I just don't be bothered with those. I don't think you can really make any money in those. I think they're kind of dangerous, the penny stocks. I just prefer to trade stocks that have volatility, momentum, and volume in them, okay? So when, when you look at something and you look at a chart, you may say, well, this looks like it's, it's, going, it's going higher, Melissa. Really, it does it? Are you sure? Because sometimes something does what's called a fake out. And institutional money is in a chart, no matter what, and you might get swayed in something, thinking something is moving higher when it's really not, it's really moving lower, because the move up it might make on the day, for example, may not be by institution. But a big flow of money going in a certain direction is what moves the market stocks and creates momentum and sets the trend in charts. And when you're looking for institutional money, you're really reading where the side of the power is and who is in control of it. You want to be in the side of the power in order for you to make money trading because it's the only way, again, you are going to be able to consistently make money. Institutional money is in charge of the market and stocks at all times. And even if you think it's not, it really is. And actually, the market is a great example of this. And when I say the market, I'm meaning here the QQQs and the SPY because those are the two ETFs I look at, although you could look at the DIA2, DIA, and the Dow ETF. 
Now let's look here at trip. This is a great example of what? Of institutional selling that happened in a stock. So last Monday, no trades. Then Tuesday was 11.7. What happened in this ticker symbol? I don't remember what this was. I think it might have been earnings. I don't remember though. This was a week ago. The stock closed up here around 39.50. This is at four o'clock Eastern time and opened the next morning where? Around 34 whatever, okay? Under 35 bucks. So if you came and learned my method or if you were with me in the training room and have learned the method, you would see that the stock is gapping down and you would rate it per the 26 point system. And that would tell you, okay, is this going to rally or is it going to drop? Now again, it's easy to look at this here and say, oh, look at that. But in the morning, you don't know. It's just hovering here. The price is moving. It's wiggling and jiggling. So I look at the pre-market movements. Okay, you can look at any chart you want. You can just look on your level two and you can see it. So there it is. It's hanging around there, moving, wiggling and jiggling. And you're trying to figure out, A, if you want to do it, and B, if you should go long it or short it. Okay, in the case here, trip was a good short. And you can see after the fact, again, it's easy after the fact. But the idea and the beauty behind what I do is to predict it before it happens. And like I said, if I can't predict it, then I'm not doing it at all, okay? So then I'm not, I'm not losing. And, th and that's what I'm looking for. And that's why I didn't do anything today. Anyways, here you see the drop in this. The stock open here fell off a cliff. Actually, this is more than four bucks. A tremendous move for stock even at this price. Okay, way more than 10% drop in the day, not even including where it was the night before. So if, if you can see here the night before is around 39.50. If you own this stock, okay, and you were in it the night before, it, it lost $9 plus from the four o'clock time of the one day to the next day of the four o'clock time. And there you have it. So this was a short if you were a trader. It was not a long. Now, here was the setup in the trip. There were two trades in this. First one, this is again a one minute chart. So you can see down here, okay, all these bars are the volume bars here. Each bar here is 60 seconds. All right, so this is what I do every morning. Say I like the trip, and that was the one I liked last week. Stock closed here the night before, one minute chart gap down, open, dropped, okay? So I'm looking for a way to short the stock. And all I'm doing is trying to get in and get out. I just get in and out, in and out. That's all that I do. Now, in this case here with trip, you could have held it pretty much almost to the close. You saw the way this closed here, it closed near the low. This is four o'clock. But I like to trade in the morning. I think that's really the best, best, best thing to do as a day trader. The longer you trade in the day, you're more you're at risk. And I think your eyes get tired and you lose your edge. So I, I keep my edge intact by pinpointing a certain time of the day, mostly focusing on shorts, which I mostly, mostly do, although Disney was along on Friday. So it's not like I'm opposed to longs, but mostly focusing on the shorts. And then also, like I said, focusing on a set, set time period and gaps. So here was this trade. Entry, this is the first one, 33.69. It's a short share quantity. This will vary depending on your own personal risk per monetary risk, okay? If you want to only risk 100 bucks a trade, you would not be taking 2,500 shares. This is an advanced risk to show you the results if you wanted to achieve these results here, monetary results. Exit 3309, profit 1,500 bucks. Again, if you have a goal in the day and you're up in your goal in the day and the stock drops, drops, drops and starts to back up, what are you going to do? The right thing to do is to get out. I put this here in this webinar just to show you buying power needed and then to show you if you wanted a prop account. There are two types of trading accounts. You can have a retail account or a prop account. Prop accounts give you more leverage. Retail accounts are standard four to one. Overnights are two to one and none of these trades in here are overnights. They're all day trades. So you must be in and out before the close. But buying power needed here, a little over 84,000. Okay, so this isn't crazy. Does anyone have any questions here about trip? Okay, so this was the first one in trip. The second one in trip, and actually there was many, many trades that you could have done in trip, but I'm just showing you the second one in trip, uh, although there was several of entries on here, was on a 15 minute chart. Okay, this is all in the morning. So now this is a 15 minute, not a one. If you wanna do this trade, you will learn this in my class as well. 
stock dropped and fell in the morning, okay? You could have shorted this here and gotten the drop in this here. It had a really, really nice move. Stock, again, you're looking for the money move. The money move, if you're shorted, is a drop into itself, a drop into itself, the drop in, okay? The idea is not to hold every stock down to the low of the day. I know trip closed at the low of the day, but how could you predict that? You wouldn't necessarily know that. You, you learn this in my class, you have set targets, you have the monetary targets, and then you have targets you have in the chart. And you've gotta watch a, a stock when it shows you exit signs, or what are called reversal signs, okay? Anyways, this was the second trade in trip. 3182, share quantity 3,000, exit 31 bucks. Although, like I said, it dropped more, it went down to 30 something. Profit 2460. You would need a little bit more buying power for this, close to similar. Again, under 100 grand in BP. Prop account cash you would have needed 9,546 for this position specifically. And I will say that most of the trades that I'm looking at the stock ticker symbols could be anywhere from five bucks to 65. But, you know, Disney on Friday was, you know, a little bit more expensive, over 100 bucks. There are those ones that happen too. So it's, it's really what you can afford per your account where you go and decide you wanna trade, of the buying power. Any questions so far as Kathy is writing there in the room? So anyways, that was a really good day. So you can see here, almost four grand in the day in that one day, it didn't matter that money, there wasn't anything. Again, the idea is to be profitable. If the market gives you something to do and says, I'm good, Melissa, I meet the criteria, it's setting up on the live day, you do it. If you don't get it, you don't do anything. And that's part of being a professional too. Then there was the snap. This was 11.8, and actually this one continued as well. Went far, far greater than I thought. I had to get going this day, had things to do, but the bottom line is this worked way bigger and fell, fell more than a dollar through after my exit in this one. Snap, gap down. Closed the night before up here at 15 something, gap down in the morning, what? 13.50, whatever, wherever it opened. Open, rallied, fell. Stock broke 13, went all the way down to 12 something. I think it went down to $12 on the day. So snap was a short, okay? So anyways, here's the one minute chart on the snap. Stock closed here, gap down. There were traders, day traders, that were actually long the snap in here, long the snap in here, long the snap in here, and long the snap in here, and even try to pick it up in here. In fact, I think people tried to pick this snap up in here, which was ridiculous. But anyway, snap was not a long, it was a short. So this was, this was just a classic, classic Melissa call to short this snap and get it at the right place, which we absolutely did, because a lot of day traders were looking to buy the snap because it gapped down to the prior support. The prior support was back here from September. Stock gap down, this was an earnings gap, but it wasn't a long, it was a short. And there were a lot of periods in here where trader day traders were trying to pick it up long, but it was a great short and you could have been in all day. And that's one of the reasons also why it went to 12 something. Institutions were selling the snap. That's why snap went like it did. It was not a long. It doesn't matter how many day traders and how many rooms want to go long snap. If the people in charge of that chart, which is the snap, okay, are gonna sell their long position or short snap, which institutions funds can do, then there's nothing that's gonna hold it up on the day, okay? And so that's what I'm looking for when I'm rating my picks. And I actually could have shorted snap today. I didn't notate that in the room as a continuation gap, but it really gapped up. It was just a trend trade if you shorted snap on the day. Anyways, this was a nice move down. Did a quick one in this because I had to get going and get out. Entry in this one, 1369, 4,000 shares quantity. Exit, 1328 profit, 1640. Nice move on the snap. Buying power needed for this. Only have as much as a prior trade. Again, good size. Size will vary depending on the entry in the stock, which I do call in the live room. 54,760, 10 to one in a profit account, $5,400. Really nice trade and snap. Again, not an expensive stock. And I want to point out the move that this made. So from the entry where I call this, so I'm shorting this in the tally thing. And if you didn't have to get going, I was on TV that night, I had to leave at 10. But if you didn't have to get going, you could have made well over a buck and a half in this. Could have had a huge monster day with the size that I had in that from the morning. So bottom line is, I was short this in the tail before the stock went red. Because the stock didn't go red to here under the break of 1350. 
really, really nice read of the chart up here for me to call the snap in the room. Any questions on this? Now, how do I know this? Because I, I can see what's happening, this whole thing, by my point system, by my 26 point rating system. And that tells me snap is not along no matter what these traders are doing in here. And there wasn't anything in here that told me anything otherwise. Okay, still getting in the train between 9.30 and 10. And in the case here, I got out by 10 and made, made my goal. But you could have held it longer is my point. If you do decide to hold trades longer, I would move your stops down and watch them very, very carefully with the market. Anyways, this is a very reasonable buying power needed, needed for this type of trade. Most day traders trade on margin. Again, if you trade on margin, you must be in and out before four o'clock. If you're doing overnights on margin, you should be doing them in much, much smaller size than something like this. Now, AMD was on the Thursday. 11.9, we did look at this chart already. Stock closed here, gap down, dropped. Just a small baby move. But again, you could hit your goals for the day in something like this. You gotta see it in the right direction. You gotta get the entry right. Here was the AMD. Stock closed here, gap down. One minute chart, open rally, boom, short it, get the drop. Here again, this is the move that you want to get. You see this? This is a sell-off. If you're short the stock, you want to get this. This is what you want to do. This is how you're going to make money. And there's no suffering here because as soon as you take the trade, you're up, which is the best, best way and the only way that I really like to trade. It's hard sometimes if I have to wait a little bit, and that is also why I prefer to do shorts. You do not have to be that patient in, in, in shorts. You do have to be very patient sometimes in longs, not only for them to go, but for them to really get a move. And sometimes you do have to hold longs after 10 o'clock, which is a pain in the butt, but sometimes I do it if we don't have anything better. Anyways, entry in the AMD, 1127, share quantity 7,000. Again, dirt cheap compared to something like Disney. And no matter what size account you have, 1112, profit 1050, BP needed for this, 78,890. 10 to one in the prop, cash count 78,89, okay? Again, goal for the day, in, out, in, out. You look at this here, this is nothing. This is 15 cents. But with the exact entry, knowing the time of the day, knowing the direction you want to do it, plopping on the size, putting it in the stop, taking it, watching it, having the targets, getting it, getting out. And that's how you do it. I think it really, really, really helps having me call the trades live, which I do every day in the room, and tell you where to put the stop, tell you where to put the entry, tell you where to get out and give the gap ratings and say if I like somebody or say if I don't, which I have no problem doing. No one talks me into doing anything I don't like or otherwise. But you know, you, you, you do have to learn how to do this yourself because you, you can't rely on me forever, all right? So it's a prerequisite to be in my trading room to do my class. A, these trades set up fast. You should be seeing it at the exact same time that I'm seeing it too listening to me in the room and having your charts up yourself and knowing how to take the trade yourself. Me calling it reinforces it for you, helps give you the confidence and conviction to do it yourself, which takes sometimes it takes people days, sometimes it takes people weeks. Everyone gains a certain level of confidence to do it after the class on their own. Some people have been hit over the head with the market and it takes them longer to gain confidence even if they're following me. Some people, it happens very quickly and very fast, but it is a prerequisite to be in my room to have to do my class, and it's the best thing for you because I'm not going to do. I'm not going to teach the class forever. I'm just not. I've started doing television, and, and and I'm looking to do that in my future. So the bottom line is that you know you have to take some personal responsibility if you want to do this, but it's it, it's real. You can do it. This is not beyond the realm of possibility. The problem is it's so many trading rooms out there are doing things like snap going long they're going along into the support in snap or they are waiting till after 10 o'clock to do snap and getting crappy entries crappy risk to reward waiting needing the market for the picks or trend trading okay and very often also, I'll tell you right now as well, a lot of people don't know how to read trends right, which is a completely different thing. It's something I teach in the trends class and I'm not gonna talk about that today. But you know, you don't need either hundreds of thousands of dollars to day trade either. Buying power means that it's the margin, it's the margin that the broker where you're going to trade is giving you. 
And it's saying, I'm giving you this much margin to trade. And every, every professional trader trades with margin. Even if you don't have to, you do. Because why wouldn't you? And if you're in and out of these trades in 5, 10, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, a half an hour, one hour, why wouldn't you trade with margin? It just makes sense. So that's why everybody does it. Any questions so far about anyone? Man, you guys are really quiet tonight. I feel like I'm talking, talking, talking here. I just looked over. No questions so far. There's a decent amount of people here tonight, too. Really, nobody has any questions? Then Ken has a question. How do you find these stocks? Is there a scanner or such? I just look on the list of earnings seasons ratings for what's going out for the uh, reports, which you can just Google on yahoofinance.com or nasdaq.com and just plop them up and see what's out tonight. For example, um, I know that Walmart's out this week. So, you know, you just look on the list of earnings calendars. You can get them free anywhere. Yahoo Finance is a good place. As far as immediate scanners, I do not pay for an extra scanner. I did for a period. I paid for MadScan a long time ago. My God, more than five years ago, I paid for MadScan. And I, I felt it was just overlap. So all I do in the morning is look at my top 20 list, which is 40 picks down and 40 picks up of in, in, in just a regular platform, which every platform should give you free, top 20 picks, which is 20 picks in the New York Exchange and 20 in the NASDAQ. And then you have flip-flops alongs. And then the list of earning you know, earnings, earnings that are just coming out. It's not hard to find stocks that are gapping. Use your platform, which you get for free, which is 40 picks and then 80 total, 40 in either direction, and print out the earnings calendar every Sunday before the week starts. I don't print it out, but I look at it, and that's how I know, oh, this one looks like a good one for this week or whatever. There was a good one I like for tomorrow. What the heck was it? Galahad, what did I say I'm looking forward to tomorrow? I can't even think of it now because it was 9 o'clock this morning. I looked at it and I said, this is a good one for tomorrow morning if it does it. Was it DKS? Yeah, it was DKS. Dick's Sporting Goods is tomorrow morning. I don't know what it does, but Dick's Sporting Goods reports tomorrow morning before the bell. So sometime tomorrow morning, DKS will gap and then I will rate it. It has earnings out tomorrow morning. And that'll be an interesting one because we've had all these shootings and they sell guns. It's one of those gun stock realty, uh, retailers. Actually, there's a, it's a big week for retail. I think Target's out this week too, although don't quote me on that. And I forget what night Walmart is. Finding them is easy. It's determining which one to do. And as you can see from going through my, my uh, just the last six weeks of the picks, of the top watches, my, I have much better days and only do one thing. If I have more tick, than one ticker symbol, the, probably the first trade failed, then I flip to a second one. So for me, the best days I have is one ticker symbol. If I make my goal in one, would I, why would I do anything else? If I've got more than two ticker symbols on it per day, then I had a, a bad trade, the first trade out, and then I'll look at the second pick I've got if the first one fails or I get stopped. So for me, I found, and this is just like I said, trading like for you know nine years, almost 10, the, the best way to have the most success is to focus on one. And that's not to say that there weren't days where there was more than one thing to do. There were many days in here where there were other people in the room that did other things that they liked, but I didn't like those ones. And so I like to be focused on one. I only got two eyes and two hands anyways, and a lot of these set up at the same time. But theoretically, if you have five gaps, say they all rate per my 26-point system, you could do them all, if you watch them all, and they all sit up, <laughs> I mean, you can, you'd, you know, you'd have to be really quick on the draw to get them all, and obviously that would be crazy for me because I'm running the room talking at the same time and pressing the button. I mean, I'm only one person. But I really, when I was alone trading, I really just had much, much higher odds of success focusing on one thing, plus with the size I'm taking. You know, I mean, you could take a trade and be up in it, your goal for the day, very, very quickly. 
and and you got to get out. So I don't want to let that go away from me. And if I'm looking at three different charts, somebody could go shoot right to the target. And if I don't have that jiggy up, you know, I could miss my exit. You know what I'm saying? So I just really think that the focus counts. All right, let's look at the Disney. Disney here was along. So the stock closed here, gapped up. This was Friday. Actually went long Disney. Had a great entry on this. It looks like a great target too from the way that it closed on the Friday. I never went back and looked at it Friday night. But again, going for the day. Nice long on the Disney. Hot, waited a little bit in this was kind of aggressive, but not as aggressive as I normally am. So stock drop fell, boom. This is a long, okay, the rest of them were shorts last week. Got it? Got the rally. Again, do you see the money move? So you're buying the stock and you're getting the move up. And you're buying the stock and you're getting the move. Okay. And so you're taking it and you're putting in the stop. And that was a one minute chart. Entry 105.05, share quantity 1500, exit 106.10, rallied over 106, went slightly higher. That was a great exit on this looking back at the close. Profit 1575, buying power would have been more for this one because of the price point of the stock. You didn't have to take 1500 shares of the so, you could have taken 500 shares of this. Take half of what this is. If your account is 80 some thousand in BP, then you would have taken 750 shares or whatever. 10 to 1 prop cash account, 15 grand plus. Still a really, really nice trade. And look at this. If you waited, like most day traders do, to do this trade after 10, you didn't really get a smooth move in it. This is a smooth, steady move up. Meaning, as soon as you take the entry, you're immediately up and you're up every second till you get out and it goes to the target. If you went long in here, you got stopped. If you went long in here, you didn't get stopped, but you didn't have as good of a smooth move, and it also took you longer. This is a straight shot up, done five, eight minutes. This in here, you're waiting 20, 30 minutes or more. And then also, it looks like this was the high. Never got over the high, and if you had redone this here, you'd have been waiting for this to get over the high, and never did it. So you would have had to get out here with the profit. Again, day trading, you must get out money before four. So what are you going to do? You can sit in the trade all day to 357 or you can look for the best time of the day that you're going to get the best momentum and the best movement and the best volume and the best volatility and the easiest thing that you could see that you're going to predict. This is going to go, if I take this here, it's going to go right here in the next five, 10 minutes. It's just the same thing. Like if I want to do something like right now, it's 512. I can predict that I will be talking here until minimum 530 tonight. And then after that, Kathy will probably kick me off. What will I be doing at 8? 8 12 tonight three hours from now i'm really not sure i might be eating dinner i might be watching a television show i might be asleep i might be on the phone with a friend i don't at 8 12 three hours from now i really don't know what i'll be doing so in six hours from now at 11 13 it's 5 13 now what will i be doing six hours from now gosh six hours from now i don't know i hope i'm asleep but maybe i'll be watching tv maybe i'll be on the phone with a friend i won't be any dinner at 11 o'clock at night so do you see, it's hard, harder for me to decide what I'll be doing six hours from now. Three hours from now, I'm not 100% certain. In the next 15 minutes, two, three, four, five, ten, yes, I can tell you what I'll be doing. It's very similar to a stock. So it's easier to predict where stocks are going to go in a shorter time frame than it is in a longer time frame. And I'm just talking about the day as a day trader, okay? Now, in a longer time frame, I'm talking out for the next few weeks or months, or years, if you read a trend in a stock correctly, you can predict where it's gonna go in a longer time frame. but those are investments, swing trains, or very, very long-term options which you have to pay to get out. And in between that period, you can suffer wiggles and jigglies because most things do not power trend forever up or down in the direction that they're going even trending. I will tell you the market has been in an exceptional uptrend an exceptional bullish uptrend ever since the election last year, more than a year ago now today. And if you went long the market on election day last year, you never suffered any one down day and you are up. And you were a long way from getting anywhere near that entry price, which was a year ago. That is unbelievably unique and a, and a very unique situation where you would have had a trade like that to happen for one year in the market. But the market has power trended up. 
okay? If you're day trading though, you only have till four and that is it. So you have to use the chart itself and look for the easiest, quickest, most predictable moves. And I have found that that is between 9.30 and 10 a.m. Eastern time, okay? So last week's totals were great. Over a grand, and, and again, I don't know what we're gonna get this week. I do think we have a solid week this week. Today was nothing though. So I've been saying this over and over, focus on the time of the day. Between 9.30 and 10, the fast trades, the momentum which comes into the gaps. Are all gaps created with institutional money? No, I showed you a bunch on the AMD chart, they're not. Sometimes something will go completely against what's happening in the gap, up or down, and you will say, oh crap, you know, why did this happen? Sometimes you can watch it for the next day if you didn't got stopped. Sometimes you just won't do it. You'll see, gosh, this isn't working today and you won't do the trade at all and you'll just go do something else or nothing. But gaps happen in the market on a regular basis. And that's the nice thing about them. There are days though like today when there isn't any that meets the criteria, but there's like that in any strategy you do. Some gaps are better than others though. There's some that I really know like trip that I just say this is, you know, solid as a brick. And then there's some like AMD, I say, you know what, this is a baby move here. It's just it, a little quick one. Some gaps are nothing gaps, and some gaps are very powerful displays of institutional money. TRIP was one of those. The most important gaps in the market are gaps that signify a change of direction or a bigger move in the same direction. Understanding which gaps are meaningful and which gaps are not meaningful in the market will really help you to know what to do, how much risk to take, whether to do one trade or two, and then you'll be able to see when a change is occurring. And that's how you'll know where the power of money will flow and flow to you. And while it can be very easy to trade. And something like trip, for example, last week, it was very easy to short. And even, even the snap, for me, for me, the snap was easy. But there were a lot of day traders that went long snap. And they may have gone long and then flipped it and gone short it. And that is the worst thing that you could possibly do. You can't have 100% conviction in going long and short the same stock the same day. That's ridiculous. And unfortunately, that's what a lot of traders do. And that's why they never get good at anything. If I go into something and I like as a short, that's it. It's a short. If it stops, then I'm done. Even if I see it flips, I don't flip around and go long it. I never, 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 never do that. I have never have done that. And that is one reason I'm so good at reading a chart and seeing this. I never, never do that. And if you, if you learn one thing from me and I, don't ever do it. Don't ever go long and short the same stock on the same day. Don't do it. You will screw up your head. Your head will never be right. You will have conviction in nothing. So the conviction that I have, not only has allowed me to do well myself, it's allowed me to teach other people, direct them in the room every day, and now to talk on national television. So you gotta get conviction in what you're doing. Otherwise, how are, you gonna, how are you gonna make 40 grand in six weeks, or how are you gonna make any money at all? You're gonna lose. Because you can't go long and short the stock on the same day. That's ridiculous. And it doesn't mean that somebody's going to go up and down. That's not the point, okay? Disney fell into the close on Friday. But the move was up in the beginning part of the day. And you went long it and you were done. And you could have had your goal on for the day doing that. Anyways, the idea is to learn the system. And that's what gives you the conviction. And the money will come. It can come immediately if you take the size. It can come no matter what size you take. Profit is profit. Profit is profit. Money is money. Okay, it's better than losing. There are so many people that lose money in the market because they have no clue what to do. And they never will. They just won't because they won't listen. They won't pay attention. They don't understand what the point of this is. You have only one point to doing this. You have to make money and you have to be able to predict it and you have to get in and out. And that's the point. Okay, unless you want to be Warren Buffett, if that's your goal in life, then that's fine. But you better bankroll yourself pretty darn good. Because even Warren Buffett will suffer through being in stuff, down in stuff, but he gets so rich it doesn't matter. And if you're not that rich, then you can't suffer in trains and be down in them until they flip around. So the idea and the objective for you as one individual in the market, okay, even if you have a decent sized trading account, you, you have to be able to make money. And you have to be able to predict where it's going to go. And, and the easier you can do it, the better, which means the shorter the time frame. Because like I said, it's 519. I'm talking to you. I'm going to be talking to you to 530. But three hours from now, I don't know. I can't even tell you an hour from now what I'll be doing. Just like you probably can't tell me. So do you see? Stocks are just like people. So anyways, if you want to learn, I, I teach a class on my method. It's this week in November 18th and 19th. You can learn my system. Now, what else do you need to be successful? 
I'm going to talk briefly about this a few minutes here because we're doing okay with time. <clears throat> um, and if anybody has any questions, let me know. Uh, you know, I mentioned something about this in the room this morning. Who trades in the market? It's people. And there's computers and black boxes, but they're programmed by people too. So you have all kinds of different people in the market taking trades all throughout the trading day, all in the post market, all in the pre market. Women, men, different people, different ages, different experience levels. Some people are angry, some people are happy, some people are mad, some people are sad, some people are rich, some people are poor. Everyone's doing different things. Like I said in the snap, sometimes it's very obvious to me that there are day traders in certain trading rooms calling that stock long and then we're shorting it and I'm calling it short in the room and I, and I know that. And when I see it and I see how the stock's acting, I'm realizing it too. So you have all these different people that are in the market. And to be successful, you have to have a successful system that's just common sense, okay? But your emotions, if they're in a good place, will help you do better as a trader and ultimately will help you be more successful. If you believe in yourself and your abilities, you will be able to push through the challenges of learning how to do a new system or, or going back into day trading itself. Let's say that you did trade before and you lost money, which many people have. No one makes money right when they start out. I didn't either, okay? I taught myself this system, I created it myself. And that was a process. It was winning and losing back and forth, so I figured it out. And it wasn't like in a day, okay? Say you took some time away. You've spent money, you've lost it, you've taken classes, you didn't learn how, you, you decide you wanna go back and do it. The best thing you can say to yourself is to have a good attitude about it and to feel good about what you're doing and be motivated to make it work. Because if your emotions are all over the place where you are worried or you don't have confidence or you're afraid or you're scared or you're just not motivated to do this and trade, then you're going to make bad decisions. You're going to make poor choices. And so the best thing you can do for yourself is to put yourself in a good emotional space. I think that, that trading is actually fun now. Of course, I've been doing it for a long time. But the most fun thing about it is that I'm just in and out so quickly in the day. I might think trading was not as much fun if I had to sit all day in a trade from 9.30 to 4. But that's not what I do, okay? And I make it easier on myself too by now having the experience level where I know like today there wasn't anything good. And I just make it easy for myself and say, I'm not gonna fight the market today. I'm not gonna fight this stock today. I'm going to just say, you know what, it's not there today, and tomorrow we're going to have a good one, and then I just wait. And that's part of the process and the patience, too. It's not your fault if you don't get a good one on any one specific day. It's not even your fault some days when things don't work. But know the market will give you a good one the next day, and if you believe in your system and have confidence in it, it will be there. But having a good space and a good mental space about yourself and trading will help you. It will, it will just help you be successful. There is a lot of people that will never do well in trading because they have, they're all over the place with their emotions. They're not in touch with their emotions at all. They have very negative emotions about the market. And also people have very negative emotions about money. Even people that have money are very worried and fearful about risking money or spending money. And that is not in a good place. Uh, when you're in a good place with money, money flows to you and, and you spend it with ease. And that's what you have to do if you want to come learn my system. You'd have to spend the five grand for my class. My class costs five grand. And you'd have to risk money in the trades. But the reward is you'd learn something to do for the rest of your life and you'd be able to pull money and pull money to you from the market by taking the trades that I call. So it's a give and take in life, and you constantly got to be moving ahead. When you're in fear and you're in a bad place, you're stuck, you're not moving ahead. In fact, the longer that you're stuck sometimes in life, you're actually moving back because life's, life's moving forward all the time. My goodness, it's almost 2018, and if you've been stuck this whole year in your training, not moving forward with anything, which means maybe not trading at all. Maybe, maybe you took the year off, you didn't trade at all, but you didn't get anywhere with it. You couldn't make up your mind if you wanted to trade. You were all in your head about it. Maybe you're following me. Maybe you're following 10 other people. Who knows? You couldn't decide if you wanted to trade. 
You didn't get anywhere with it. You're actually falling back because all of a sudden, boom, it's 2018 and you haven't gotten anywhere with it at all. So when you're stuck too long in a place, that doesn't mean you don't take a break sometimes for a little while, but you're stuck too long in a situation or a place or a job or in your mind with your trading, you're actually moving back. And that is not a place that you want to be, okay? So you really have to kind of self-assess. And, and, and again, you have to do that yourself. You have, to, you have to get into that place in your head yourself where you're of the quiet space in your quiet time. And you just think, what am I doing? But if you're in a fear mode, it's going to be very challenging for you to be successful. I try to do my best to help people with that. I believe I have. Anyways, if you want to trade effectively, you can go with a crowd of day traders. Snap was a great example of that. And you need an edge. And I've got a lot of edges. Shorting is the number one thing I do. I'm looking for institutional money. I'm focusing on the beginning part of the day. I'm looking to get in and out of trades very quickly. I'm only doing gaps. I only have one strategy. I never flip the trade like I just talked to you about before. Any questions so far? We only have a couple of minutes. CMG is another great example here of a downward move in something that was puts that I called because of the fact that this stock just really is very expensive as well. Another, another great example of using my system for the gap downs here to short, to basically buy puts because the stock was very, very pricey. But you could have day traded this too. Anyways, time of the day is critical and you can do this from home. So what do I do? I teach a class this weekend and I run the live trading room every day where I'm calling the trades with the entry, the exit, and the stop from 8.30 to 11, although the room is not open every day until 11. So you can take my live trades in the room if you do the class. I do the class usually once a, once a month. I do not know what's going on for December. I have not gotten my TV schedule yet. I know I'm doing a class this weekend, which is November 18th and 19th. If you want to learn my method to trade all of 2018, I think doing the class this weekend gives you a month ramp up to do the class, learn it, practice end of the month of December on a demo or small size or to throw yourself into it if you want, and then focus on the next calendar year 2018 to do it for the whole entire year. But you will learn in my class a 26 point rating system to find the best stock to trade each day. The course also teaches you how to enter and exit the stock on the day. And the course teaches price analysis and technical analysis on a very advanced level, which again, Snap is a great example of showing you that. And also my read in the market. But you'll learn one solid strategy to trade gaps effectively by reading the, the, the side of power and charts. And you will le learn how to read support and resistance to take positions in the right direction. And you will learn a more proficient and advanced way to read charts focusing on technical analysis and gaps, which is really what I do. I don't do anything else other than the gaps. And I prefer to short, like I said. And you will definitely, definitely get more conviction in your trading once you do my course because you will see these kind of moves. And they happen all the time. Um, how do you, X turtle, how do you find source your candidate stocks for your rating process? You just mean the scanner. That's what Venkat asked earlier. I don't think you were here. You signed in late. You just look to see what's on the top 20 list. You can find, you can, or buy a scanner if you want. You can, you can find stocks that are gapping anywhere, but you have to rate them. It is, it is, trust me people, it is not hard to find stocks that are gapping, uh, whether they're up or down. The, the, the thing is you gotta be able to go through them and rate them per the system. And I also said you can go look and print out all the stocks that have earnings. Most stocks that have earnings gap. Again, you don't know if they're good or not till you rate them, but you can find stocks gapping anywhere. That's, that's, that's nothing from me. There's, you can find them like a kajillion places. You know, and I'm sure there's even free, free things you can find online. But you know, I think the top 20 list is enough. It's 40 picks in the other direction. The list of earnings list is enough as well. Like I said earlier, I think you signed in late, but you could buy a scanner. I did pay for one in the past. I thought it was a waste. I, it was an overlap. The, the same things were showing up on both places. So anyways, trading is about chunking it out. It's income generation. When I trade, I trade with 100% conviction, and that's how I do it. So empower yourself to trade. I teach a class. It's called the Golden Gap Course. It's a full two-day course on how to strategically find, pick, and place stocks that are professional bearish gaps. The class is online. Again, it's this weekend, November 18th and 19th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. You can be anywhere in the world and take it. The class is online. Cost of the class is $4,999. If you're interested, 
you can email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. I also am doing a trends class. This is not till December, but if you want to sign up for both, you would get a discount and save $500. So the cost together, if you pay for both at the same time, is $54.99. You will learn how to read long-term trends in stock charts, which is good if you want to do swing trading or option trading. Um, Callie, you can go and use whatever broker you want, proper retail. If you would like a referral, you can certainly email me for that but I don't have any allegiance or alliance where I have a referral relationship with somebody specifically. So if you're ready to set up with somebody, use them if you've got shorts. All you need is charts, pre-market and post-market data, and a level two in order to do the trades that I call in the room. You can go wherever you want. There's so many brokers out there, even the prop places, you'll have no problem finding somebody. Venkat is asking me, while learning the system, you can copy the trades too. Yes, that's the idea that you would take the trades that I call in the live room. And I have a lot of the trading room uh, videos on YouTube. If you go subscribe to YouTube, I have a lot of the rooms taped in there. I didn't put up today's because there wasn't any calls today. But last week's, I have a bunch up from last week. I think I have Disney up from, from Friday. You can go listen to the room. And I'm also doing a combo with options just because we're coming up until the end of the calendar year, which means you would get 2018, the Gap Options letter, if you sign up for the annual letter and the Trends class and the Golden Gap class, you'll save $2,000 at $69.98. So you get the class, the Options letter for the year, and the Trends class. Two classes and the Options letter for the year if you want to do the day trades in the room, the active day trades, and get the Options letter. So the Options letter, you get emailed a trade to you like this was the CMG one. CMG broke 280 in here today. Went down low, I think it was 264. Did not get to 250, but this is a nice move. Big move here under that 280 strike. This was the trade I called out a while ago, October 25th. And this was the one here. Yeah, I think 264 was the low today. If you want to trough for the room this week for the class, just email me. Email me at melissathestockswish.com if you want more information. Does anyone have any other specific questions? Okay, sounds good. Excellent. Thank you so much for having me tonight. If you want any more information, email me, okay? I will be around. Thanks, Kathy. Oh, there's one more, go ahead. Is there one more, Kathy? I don't see any of the questions. If anybody has any other questions, just email me. Melissa at the stockswoosh.com. Okie doke. Thank you.